almost everybody, who has no numpy. <laughs> you have the numpy on the back? Yeah, yeah sorry, who has, who has no numpy? Okay, I mean, uh, and, uh, and uh, that you don't have, I mean, don't stay in the room if you don't have one, because that's not uh, exactly the uh, So that's, uh, that's a little thing, it's just a numpy version, so like a numpy is improving itself, uh, you know, along the way, and sometimes some of the code that you're running is going to run, and then sometimes it's not going to run, and you're going to say, hey, why does it not run anymore? And, uh, and one of the possible reasons is, Oh, that's not the same version of NumPy, and there's some compatibility between those versions. Usually, uh, things are pretty compatible along the way, so there are things that work with an uh, older version of NumPy, would work with a new, newer version of NumPy, but, you know, but the, the opposite is not always true, and you don't always know exactly what uh, environment you are working with. Uh, yeah, we found, found NumPy, but does anyone else have any problems? And look at your screen. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, I'll come around. Anyone else? Okay, because if you don't have NumPy, you can't do anything. Anyway, yeah, so like this, 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 a trick, uh, like a short, short uh, I'm using the notebook. I should say that notebook is not always a great place to work on, uh, to work in, because um, uh, there's a number of problems. But uh, one of them is uh, you will often go to one cell and then go back to another cell, like ten cells ago, and then run something, and you would have forgotten that you know. Uh, so it's not a linear thing. Uh, you, can, you can branch to other cells and you know, execute some cells to know above or below and that. And that's pretty, that can get very confusing very quickly. So uh, I would, I, as a demonstrator, it's, it's a good tool. Uh, it's a fantastic tool for documentation or those things. For actually working, uh, I would try to you know, be careful not to try to do some real analysis and real code in, in, a, in, a, in a notebook. That's, that's not generally hasn't been the, the best uh, experience for me and, uh, and for students in general. Okay, so now we have created a, an empire, right? Uh, now the uh, list are list, uh, but they can be list of list, and you can uh, you send to an empire a list of list, and this is a uh, list of two different lists, one, two, and three, and create uh, an array which is two dimensional array. Okay. So if you're asking what are and that, that's exactly what, uh, why uh, the notebook is not the best. <laughs> you know, you just have uh, um, run one of the cells, and, and this is that. So, um, so what, what are those uh, you know, things, the vector and the, and the matrix? Uh, those are just numpy arrays, both of them. So now the first thing on the numpy array is the shape. Uh, a shape is a tuple. You know, I hope you know now what is a tuple. You should uh, know from a uh, uh, so it's an uh, uh, immutable uh, object, and it, it tells you, okay, in that uh, in that numpy array, I've got four elements, and, and it just shows you one dimension. And so the, the first dimension, which is the Python with the dimension zero, uh, has four elements. Okay. And the shape of the uh, this n thing, this n matrix thing, is, uh, is and then the size uh, is the is the uh, the number of elements that you. So that's, uh, that should be, that is, should be straightforward. Okay, so um, why is it important and interesting to have an virus rather than a list? And the key aspect is that, uh, so there, the numbers are more restricted. I mean, you can't do all you, what you can. You can you know, include a, a new element which has a different type uh, in a numpy array. Numpy arrays have types, uh, and each element is, is the same type as, the, as another element. And that makes it extremely efficient in memory and very fast to run a number of operations. That's why it's so important. Uh, because NumPy will know uh, uh, exactly that you, know, you have like a, a bunch of aligned uh, memory with, that, with this, this, these numbers and that's uh, So it's things that will run very slowly with a, with a list will run extremely fast with an empire, right? And as soon as you have big, like a large amount of, of data, the imaging we usually have, that's going to be uh, absolutely 
So typically, if I try to assign the first uh, element uh, of my, my matrix, 2 uh, by 2 matrix, then I will get an error because uh, not by will say, hey, we can't, we can't, I, I can't actually you know, put that string in that uh, in that element because I'm expecting a fruit. But the elements of an empire array can be extremely complex. So I mean, I'm I'm saying complex because I'm putting like a complex uh, tag here. But uh, in uh, each of those cells, uh, but uh, but you can actually have in each of one an, an element of an empire array could be a very complex object. It just has to be the same object for all the empire. Okay. So that's uh, an example of the complex. Okay, so now how do you generate uh, arrays with a, let's say you don't have an array to start with or, or list a list or things like that. Uh, there's the, you probably have heard of branch in, uh, in Python. It's, uh, uh, I think in Python 3 it's now a generator. I don't know if you know like, what the generator are, but basically uh, uh, this uh, arrange, this array branch will be doing the same thing but generating, uh, uh, giving you back an array rather than a list or actually a generator. So that's a, that's a very classic uh, thing to do. So now you have, uh, and, and it, it behaves like the branch, uh, so the pattern method uh, in function, and, uh, and that's, uh, that's what it, it uh, generates. Uh, so here we're going from uh, minus one to one with increment of one to one. Uh, one. So that's the, uh, that's the one. And, uh, and you can, uh, you know, there's a number of ways of uh, creating those, uh, those arrays that are super useful. Uh, for instance, the linear space or log space, so you can actually, uh, linear space will actually create, including the, the, uh, the, the, the first and the last element of the, uh, and, and then create the number, and with like the separation of the, uh, that, uh, so the num with that number of elements in the, uh, and sometimes it's much easier to use uh, this space and uh, array. Of course, you can always, uh, I can create that thing using uh, 0, uh, 10 plus uh, 1 over 25, uh, sorry, 10 over 25, uh, and then that's uh, as an arrange. And, we, we use it. and log space, that's also interesting to uh, actually, if you create some uh, some scaling, uh, like you know, like you have like, uh, some axes that have uh, in log space, all those things, that's, uh, that can be very useful. And read. Um, and with are super useful as well. Uh, they basically uh, uh, give you uh, the, uh, like if you want to create uh, arrays that have x and y coordinates such that you can, if you group, group over the array, you have all the coordinates. That's the way of creating those. And you know, and when you're working with images, uh, often we get that sort of uh, uh, situation when you want to, uh, to actually uh, group or, or go over all the coordinates. When those coordinates are already are in arrays, uh, th this is this, uh, this is the way to, to do it. Uh, so you create those metrics of coordinates somehow that are just going to be okay. All those are my x coordinates, and for my x coordinates, those are my y coordinates. So that's and grid, uh, as in MATLAB. I think MATLAB is, MATLAB is a mesh. I think is the uh, the uh, MATLAB command. I'm not working. I haven't done MATLAB for a very long time now. <laughs> Uh, but uh, that, that would be the same, the same, uh, the same, the same. Who's working with MATLAB first of all? Okay, so think of mesh. Uh, that's, uh, okay. um, random data. So uh, there's a random generator in, uh, in, in NumPy. It's actually uh, the new version of NumPy has fantastic random generation. Like they, they have you know, like a, a very great way, like a, a fantastic um, uh, new stuff there. Um, and random generation is so uh, core to many of our scientific uh, uh, programming. Uh, because, you know, not only for random algorithms, but if you just want to like, uh, test things, and if you want, uh, that those are. So having a good random generation uh, uh, is a good thing. So you can create any, uh, uh, any array of any shape. And I'm actually, to the moment, I'm, for the moment, I'm showing you two by two, uh, like uh, arrays with two dimensions. So it's, this is a five by five array here. Uh, but uh, there's no, I mean, you can create like a three, four, five, uh, ten dimensional array. I don't know if MATLAB has updated uh, its language. But I remember that when I was working with MATLAB, creating uh, like a three or four dimensional array uh, matrix was 
was not easy, was not, uh, was not something that is, uh, number is giving you like uh, infinite possibilities on that, <laughs> in that respect, it's going to be you know, any number dimension, any finite number dimension, let's say. Uh, but you know, it's uh, given the limitation of the procedure of the uh, hardware of the information. So this is a, this is a random, like a, a, a uniform distribution of a, between 0 and 1. Okay. And this would be uh, random n for normal, would be giving you the uh, uh, Gaussian distribution 0 1. There's other ways of doing it, so I'm just going to go. Uh, so, for instance, uh, I'm just going to print, uh, I know this is a NumPy uh, tutorial, but I just want to tell you uh, quickly on the uh, SciPy. Uh, hopefully, you get more of the SciPy uh, toolbox uh, during the week, but at least uh, this is one little thing. Uh, this is uh, the start module of SciPy. Uh, so, you can import uh, SciPy.start, uh, and, uh, and uh, I'm importing that at SSD, I think. That's my convention, but I don't know what is the convention. If someone knows, please uh, chime in. Uh, so, uh, and the, the great thing there is that you can create uh, a distribution of object. That is a distribution of, of your lab. So, so this one is norm for, norm, uh, for normal distribution. Uh, zero ones for like a mean and, and, uh, and scaling and uh, and and, and uh, exponential division of that distribution. But you could have instead of norm, you could have like an exponential distribution, a t, t distribution, or like all those things. And then you create that object, that random variable, and that object you can have plenty of things with that object. So you can take the CDF, the CDF, you can take the inverse variable function, you can do like a, and you can also do a random sampling. So that, from that object, so it's a normal zero one random variable. That's, that's my name. Okay. Uh, just just give me some normal zero one variable, right? And then you can sample and say, hey, what is the size of the uh, array that I want back? And that's that's it's giving you an array of, uh, of normal zero one variables. Uh, so that's just a little uh, detour into SciPy. Uh, because I think that's a super useful thing to have. Uh, I don't know how much you get of that. Okay, so back to the numpy. Uh, array uh, diagonal. I mean, like, if you have a uh, two-dimensional 12 2 array, then you have zero. I don't actually. Uh, and you know, if you can want the uh, sort of the of diagonal by one, this is k over one, and you get, uh, you, get uh, you, you get your diagonal at, 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 at uh, on the of by one. And I think you can put so it's the minus one, Oops. and then that should be given yeah, in the other. Okay, so one of the key, uh, the keys uh, like um, uh, arrays, you know, arrays of zero and arrays of one, so there are functions for that. And again, you're just giving the shape of the array. So if I ask, uh, uh, if I ask what's the shape of uh, this uh, specific array, uh, so I could do, and those are objects, always objects, right? Uh, so we have to do, okay, that's an object that I've just created. Can you give me your shape? What's the shape of that object? That's obviously free free, I know. <laughs> free free, but you know, it's just to do more shape. Okay, so uh, then we need one, six, and so on. Um, all right, file, uh, input, output. Uh, there is a lot of, uh, of fun work that you will be doing or you're doing that involves uh, Excel spreadsheets that are uh, in the CSV or TSV file. Uh, so those, so NumPy has a, a bunch of things uh, uh, for helping with that, like reading, uh, uh, exporting to CSV, reading CSV, all those things. Uh, there are better ways, less, uh, so NumPy is uh, like a low level, a bit low level, but it's not as low level as uh, C or SMB or language or whatever. It's kind of like already a high level in some sense, but, but you know, like uh, there are packages such as Pandas, you will uh, learn that, that have uh, like an even higher level, they're more clever in terms of what, uh, what if the CSV has like multiple uh, header lines, what if the CSV has, you know, uh, you know uh, various uh, uh, constructs that you, 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 you wouldn't be able to actually directly uh, uh, get from the But if you have a simple CSV, NumPy will happily put your CSV. And this is, this is not even a CSV, this is just a columnar, uh, column of data in a, the, the DAT uh, format, which is data format. Uh, it's probably a, a Windows thing, but... Um, and then just those, those are just columns, and, uh, and this is just showing you, uh, you know, what, uh, 
uh, how you would do it in Python. So open uh, uh, open that uh, this uh, this little uh, uh, file as an ID, and then for the for the, you know you enumerate. Uh, and maybe you have a lot to enumerate. Who's know who knows enumerate? No, you a couple of people, but otherwise enumerate is just um, giving you both the index. Uh, let's say you enumerate a list of something that is you can iterate on. It gives you first index of the of the of this uh, things you can iterate on, and secondly the actual element of that. So if I enumerate a list that is a uh, uh, list uh, three, four, five, I enumerate, I get first zero, three, then one, uh, four, and then so on. So that's uh, that's what enumerate um, is doing, and then you just have print the, uh, the line where it's keeping the right uh, right. So uh, this is just an example of uh, getting the data uh, and you have like a real data, 77,000 uh, lines, which is not like a, a small number. You see how NumPy you know, like happily takes that in a, in, a, in a big array, or not very big, but <coughs> and seven columns. And then this is a way of actually displaying uh, this. Uh, so you, uh, you will learn probably much more of uh, how to display things, but I'll just we are giving you, like, how uh, you will uh, possibly do those things. This is, again, this is Matplotlib. Uh, Matplotlib is the kind of low-level uh, library for visualization in Python. Uh, uh, there are libraries of, uh, uh, that are more, that are higher level, that uh, will be uh, often coding Matplotlib. So you probably will be learning Seaborn sometime, I don't know, I guess. I'm, so, after you, after the copy break, I'm going to cover Matplotlib and some Seaborn. Okay, I'm not covering that. I'm mean, just like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's okay. Excellent. Uh, so that's the low level thing you have to have that. Um, okay. So uh, and you can say those things like the uh, NumPy self text, for instance, with uh, set the uh, NumPy array to uh, a CSV format, which is also good. Okay. So now we've done that. Uh, I can show you what the random matrix CSV will look like on my machine, for instance. So uh, if I save that thing, uh, and if I look at uh, should have oops, should have something to run them at least that CSV. And that's what you know, this one is nice. It's not, nothing magical or not. Okay, and I'm sure there's a way of uh, putting that for the name for that. For that. Okay, so there is uh, uh, NPY, which is uh, you know like a, a condensed. This is text. This is, this is ASCII, so it's, uh, it's, uh, it's pretty light. But if you have a lot of data, you don't actually want to get them in ASCII because first of all, you're going to lose some precision, and if you can't have like a, you know, or, or if you don't lose some precision, you're going to have like a three and then uh, thirty decimals after three point. Okay, so you want those things to be uh, uh, included in binary format. Uh, so that's uh, NPY will do that for you, and uh, you can actually uh, uh, load and, and, and save and, and, and load things, uh, numpy arrays and, and uh, Okay, so more properties of the uh, numpy arrays. Uh, item size. I told you an array is a thing that is uh, like a, a, a series of the same of the same type of object. Right? So, uh, so uh, item size is giving you okay. How big is one of those objects? Uh, and then if I've got an array of 1,000, then I know that my total memory or total, uh, uh, the size of that uh, array will be 1,000 times that item size. Okay. So that's, uh, uh, and then for instance, uh, here we got, uh, uh, so M, remember, M is a 4 by, is a 2 by 2 trick, okay? Uh, so M we've got, uh, 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 the sum of M is 8, and, uh, and on the byte, uh, okay, so uh, uh, byte element, it's four element. Uh, okay, uh, 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 it should be, I don't know, uh, yeah, then uh, it should be this. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll uh, sort that out. And the number of dimension will uh, we'll give you the number of dimension. That, I would say, should have been the number of elements times the number of the item sums, but uh, there's something which I will uh, do. All right, so uh, now we have a big array. 
uh, how do you get data from it? How do you, uh, you know, subsample or um, sub, uh, get, get a piece of that array uh, in, uh, in uh, And the simplest uh, way of doing it is just like uh, this. You, uh, uh, you're looking at, you're taking the, uh, uh, you know, like a square bracket, give you, give the index, and uh, but if you have a multiple dimensional array like a two by two, then you get the several index as many dimensions that you have. That's what the uh, uh, index is. So uh, if you uh, if you're giving like uh, this is n now is uh, n is now a two by three matrix. Uh, if you're giving n of one, uh, what do you think this is going to give? Now it actually gives you so it, uh, the first dimension of that array is is the are the rows right uh, and the second dimension are the columns and you can think of it this way uh, so the, it's going to give you the first the first dimension so uh, n of one is actually uh, another array which is the what is in uh, what what array is in that dimension. So, so you take the first uh, one, remember the one is the second, right? So that would be the second row, and we give you all the elements of the second row. Okay, so that's what happens, uh, and it, it actually returns an array. Okay. So it's a, uh, all those things are arrays of arrays of arrays. Like a multi-dimensional array is just like, you know, arrays of arrays of arrays. Uh, so m of one would be the, this, uh, the second row, m of zero should be the first row, uh, and so on. So uh, you can also say, hey, uh, give me all the elements in that uh, first, in, the, in that second row. And that's the, uh, this uh, column here is saying everything. Okay. So that uh, should give you the same thing. Uh, now we can do the opposite and say, hey, give me all the rows and, and only the, uh, the, the second column. And that's uh, what this uh, end column one would give you. You can assign things with those, uh, with those things, of course. Uh, so now uh, the first element of the of n is zero, okay, because you assign it to be zero. Uh, and you can actually uh, do that for, uh, you know, like a, you can, uh, not by will understand, if, you, if you're trying to assign zero to a bunch of things, to a bunch of uh, places in, the, in this array, you will actually understand and put all those zeros in there. So that's, uh, that's what this, uh, this thing is. So we'll take the second column and it gives you like a, you know, like a, this, this one is going to put zeros in this row and then this, uh, this uh, command is going to put minus one and the last one, and the last one. Okay? You really have to stop me, raise your hand whenever, right? Otherwise I'll continue happily. Uh, <laughs> uh, Stacy. Uh, so let's uh, create a little array, a simple array, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, uh, slicing is uh, taking a, a bunch of continuous or not so continuous, we'll see the better, uh, part of the array. So slicing, if I slice from one to three, uh, we'll start uh, uh, from uh, the uh, second element. Uh, element index and one is the second element, right? And three is actually going to be the end, but not included in the result. So the, the third, the third the index three is going to be uh, a. Two. <coughs> right. Okay. Uh, so that gives you indeed uh, the first, the second, and the third. Index. Okay. So that's that's that. That's what it is. Um, you can also assign, like if you put the right numbers. I think that that's because you have the right numbers. If you didn't have the right numbers. Let's say um, uh, uh, that is going to fail because I didn't put the right number, element, number of elements. So uh, the rule is uh, M lower, column, upper, for size, lower, upper, with upper not included, and then step. So if you want to do like a, a 2 by 2, 3 by 3, or those things. Alright, so, um, so right, and you can leave it entirely uh, with nothing, it will actually you know, by default take the uh, uh, right, uh, right. So it's step in of two questions, you take one element after one element. So, uh, so I just uh, want to remind you what is A, A is this A. Right. So, uh, okay. uh, 
um, a tree gun to give you everything up to the up to the up to the end. All right. Uh, what is a of minus one going to give you? That's a bit of a tricky one. Minus one is actually starting from the end. So sometimes it's very useful because then, you know, sometimes you, you actually don't want to, okay, let's compute the, what, what is the length of that uh, array again? And then let's uh, take the last element and then you know, n minus one and you have, to, you have to do a bunch of things. Uh, NumPy is giving you a way of addressing the array directly from, from the end. Uh, so that's, uh, that's what this minus one uh, is from. Any minus, so minus two would be a deep, one, uh, one uh, again, one left to the end, right, uh, and, and so on. So that's what it is. Uh, nothing more magical. We just have to. Um, yes, same thing for multidimensional arrays. Uh, so this is a way of constructing an array that is uh, 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 very interesting. It's a it's it's a cool way in pattern. That's a, that's a little patterning. Have you learned about uh, list comprehension at all? Yes, you have. Okay, this is an example of one. Uh, okay, you're doing like a n plus n for n in one of the five, uh, for n in one of five as well. So you're going to construct a five, uh, five list of five, so a five by five list, and then you, uh, you get that in the by array, and you get back uh, a, a five by five. So that's a, a pretty good way of uh, creating a, a multi-dimensional uh, list, and then you have. Uh, and you can you can get indexing would work uh, as I uh, should do for the, uh, the simple uh, uh, array. We get uh, from one to four. We can we actually go from the second position to the uh, not the fourth one. Like the one uh, that we count one, two, three, two, three. Uh, giving me three three element. Uh, four is not included as well. All right. So nothing magical. Tries the same thing. You can you know like uh, if you. Put your step like in multi-dimensional. Okay, so let's go fancy indexing. Uh, that's a little bit of a painful subject <laughs> because um, uh, I got so many times so lost in some of the fancy indexing. Uh, Kirsty, are you agreeing with that as well? Yeah, I feel like I didn't even know what fancy indexing. Yeah. So it's a, it's the way of, a, of indexing arrays uh, with arrays. So instead of, a, of, a, of giving slices like uh, you know, one, two, three, and then you get uh, the, the, those are the indexes that you can get back the values, uh, you can give arrays uh, to the arrays as you look, and you will actually say, okay, that's an, uh, that's an array. I will, uh, I will give you back uh, something that is corresponding to that array of index. Uh, so um, in the simple case, it's simple, and I, I, would, I would recommend that you keep it very simple. Uh, so. Uh, so that's uh, what was the example. So we've got row indices, and then you go. So instead of like uh, putting a uh, uh, size, you're giving it an, an array, right? Actually, like, so here it's a list, but right? you take a list of an array. Uh, and you say, okay, give me a of those uh, indices. And those indices are in an array. Uh, in the list, in this list, in general. Uh, but you know, it, this would be done easily with a size, of course. You could play it, do one, column, four, right? Uh, uh, that, that would be done with a size. But this kind of thing would not be done easily with a size, right? Uh, so, uh, so that thing here will give you something. Uh, so one would be uh, 11, because that's the second one. Uh, 22, because that's the, uh, the one after. And minus one, remember? It's uh, the last one. So it will give you the last one, which is here. So that's a bit confusing. Um, uh, well, you, you just have to be aware of, the, of that function. But that's, uh, that can be a very, very useful uh, uh, in a, of, of, um. So uh, the way, uh, it is usually very, very useful. And uh, that way, you really will really, really probably use uh, is the uh, one is the mask. Uh, so you can not only give indices, uh, but you can give booleans. So you can say, hey, I want that uh, number. I don't want that one. Or I say number, but it could be an object. Like something very complex. But, uh, you know, uh, I, I don't want that one. I want this one, this one, not this one. This one. So that's, uh, you can give it a boolean. And then, so let's call it a, a row mask. 
and then uh, if you give it a go max with that array, and you see, you will see that, okay, true for the first one, false for the second one, and so on, so you get zero. Why is it useful? Um, let me find it where it's, uh, so, uh, so let's, uh, let's take, a, uh, let's take a range again, and create an array from zero to 10, 10 not included by a uh, step of 0.5, okay? And let's see, and let's create a mask, and that's a, that's a pure pattern thing, but uh, it works uh, uh, with array, uh, the those things are uh, working array. This thing is we're going to return an array with truths where x is greater than strictly greater than 5 and false in the other, in the other position. Okay? This thing is going to uh, return uh, the truths when uh, x is less than 7.5 and, uh, and, uh, and false on the one. The multiplication here is a bit tricky. It's, uh, you have to think of it as an as a, as a end. And you could actually implement it as an end, like that. And, uh, and the reason why it works is because uh, uh, in, in Python, as in many languages, true and false are uh, encoded as 0 and 1. Okay. So true is 1, uh, uh, false is 0. And so if you multiply those things, you will, you will do an end, a logical end. Okay. As soon as you have a false, you have 0. That's basically it. So, so uh, I will actually I should change that and put it a real logical end because I think that would be cleaner because it doesn't uh, when you read in that code I have to know that uh, true and false are coded into zero one to understand what's going on here uh, it's good to know so I think it's but it's valuable to be in that tutorial because often you see those sort of things so it's valuable to know uh, but if I really wanted to write a code that is uh, easier for people to read, I would, I would just say a hey, logical end with those two uh, arrays. And that would, that would be easier for me to understand. Okay, so, uh, so the mask uh, is uh, it's just that mask with a, a false where we have like a. Uh, so it's a. Uh, yes, I printed uh, the first mask, which is this one, uh, the, two, uh, the two lines here, okay? And then the second mask, and then the output, which would be. Uh, uh, the end, the logical end of the multiplication will be like this and, and then you can do x of max and then get a. Give me everything where you know like you have true in, uh, in, in the position. And that's super useful because often you say, hey, of course, an image, I want to threshold image. Image greater than you know, my threshold, and then I get back those, uh, those this Boolean mask. And then, okay, now give me those values where uh, the image is better than the image. And we should get all the values where the image is better than the image. Um, okay, so that's super, super useful. Uh, and uh, and uh, copies and views. How many of you have worked with Python and have been tricked by the fact that when I say A equals B, I actually don't have objects are how we have Everybody, everybody I think. <laughs> everybody has, has to run into that problem. Okay. So when you say A will be in Python, you just say, I've got an object somewhere in memory. Okay. A is one name, B is another name. I'm not copying that object in memory. This is the same object I'm referring to. Okay. If I want the, this other object, I need to say B equal A copy or something like a dot copy or something like that. You have to or copy that object. You have to actually copy, you have to think of it like a pattern is trying to limit what you have in memory uh, and you, you just give a name to an object. Like you know, in memory you have like a, an address somewhere, that address has a, this is the name of that, of that object. So think of it like that. And that's the same for the environments. So if I have an image, I say, uh, okay, so Give me, I mean, I'm putting that image in that function, I'm doing something with the image, I'm returning the image. Uh, what's going to, I mean, it, 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 can, it can be very confusing because you're actually going to transform possibly the object that you, you have. If you didn't want that, if you just wanted to do something and return a new, a new object, that's going to be, uh, so that's, those things you really have to know uh, that in general, uh, pattern is not copying things. And that's for good reasons. But you just have to do that. Okay, so, uh, so there's a NumPy mesh memory of uh, A and B, 
which is very useful, uh, so that you know when you know some object may share some memory. Uh, so that's uh, that's what. Uh, and in general, a slicing like B equal A uh, column column two, so you're taking one of uh, two elements. In, in general, slicing will be just a view, so it will have actually common memory, and I'll show you why in a bit later. Yes. This question is about the copy um, that we just mentioned. So if I um, if I make if I have a variable a in my code and I pass it to a function and the function processes that element, yeah. um, will the main element a changes if I don't return it? Right, it will change. Even if I don't return the process a back. Even if you don't return it, it will change. Yeah, that's that's tricky. Yeah, I mean, that's tricky. Like you have, you have to know it's it's it pattern passes object by address is the technical way of saying it. Uh, it just gives you the pointer to that object. Okay, you know, you're passing uh, like a, uh, you're saying a function of a image. It takes it gives you the pointer of that image. If you want to make sure that you're not touching that uh, object, uh, just copy that image first and then. Pass. Even if it only happens in the internal part of the environment, right? Yeah, that's true. I would test it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So that's the uh, so let's uh, let's play that. Uh, and and so that's you know those two objects A and B are actually uh, are actually not uh, two different. I mean. Uh, B uh, is just a part of object A, and that's what it does. It, it just takes the only part of it. So if I do B of uh, 0 equals 10, 12, then of course the A uh, now has 12 uh, as well in, uh, in, in its uh, values. Okay, so A originally was 0 to 9, uh, B was 0 to 8 uh, by the increment of 2, and then you have uh, this term. OK, so let's, uh, let me. Um, uh, let me um, have a little peep of like, you know, how, what is the NumPy object behind the scene a bit, because that will help you understand those things. It doesn't do it. Oh, it makes sense, right? Because if something happens in the internal environment, the local, function, local thing. Well, it would affect the global environment. <coughs> it depends. Yeah, OK. So it depends if that thing is, is, is being, yeah, you're right, you're right. It depends if that thing is actually uh, defined as, as well. It could be defined as well. But I was tricked once by something. OK, I'll, I'll come back to that, because that's, uh, that's actually important. OK, so, um, the, uh, so what's inside the, the, uh, the, the arc? Uh, so uh, first of all, uh, let's uh, have that uh, little reshape thing. I think that's an interesting. Uh, function uh, method of the array. So we create here a range of 0 to 11 with uh, a range of 12. And then we reshape it, giving it the size that we want to have the array to want. To want. And uh, here I shape 3, 4, which they give you like a back an array of shape 3, 4. So we take all those numbers and they say, OK, you want 3 rows and 4 columns. OK, I'm going to make 3 rows and 4 columns with that uh, 12. Uh, and you will start from uh, the first row, second row, so you go from 0, 1, 2, 3, and not 0, 1, 2, 3, like uh, in, in the other direction. So you will start the rest with the, the, the XD type uh, is what is the type of each of these elements. In this instance, it's an int 64, so it will have uh, 8 byte uh, in memory. Um, well, yeah, 64 is not like so item size, uh, uh, stripe, so, so how does it work? Um, item size is 8, we know, we know that the int 64 has 8 bytes in memory, okay? And, it, and now and we know that uh, the, uh, the array has uh, 32 uh, 3 times 4 uh, uh, So I'm confused with this one, I don't remember what they are. Oh, that's the stripe, sorry, okay, no, that's fine. So how does it work uh, in memory? So in memory, you've got uh, all those, uh, 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 you've got the, uh, uh, 
the zero number, which has one, two, three, four uh, bytes here, then the one number, so it's uh, actually it's an int, uh, int uh, 32 here, uh, one number, the two number, and so on and so on. And then what, uh, what the use of you of that, so in memory, it's just like, you know, it's just, you know numbers after the, other, the one of the others. And then the use of you is, uh, I now uh, and I have a shape of three, four, and therefore, if I want to go one uh, number next on the same row, I increase by eight uh, bytes. Uh, and if I want to have, um, yeah, that's, that's right. Uh, and if I want to go to the next row, I just uh, use the other stripe, which is 32, and I go for 32. So I, I've got, I know that my row is four times eight, right? And I just want to increase in one dimension, I just go 32 more. So in memory, you've got just a list of numbers. And then when you want to actually change the shape of, those, of the view of that, that uh, list of things, you can actually say, hey, now instead of looking at uh, three rows and four columns, I want to look at four rows and three columns. Okay. So you can reshape that thing. It will not change the array in memory. We just change you know, those numbers of how do I access the next row and how do I access the next, the next row. So now that you know that, what do you think pattern does, numpy does, when you're doing a transpose of the matrix? So I've got a, a three by four matrix. I want to transpose it. Okay. What, uh, what, what does it do? Right, so it's, it's not going to touch at all the, uh, the data in memory. It's going to change the little uh, layer on the top of that thing that tells you, hey, if I want to actually increase one row, this is how much I, I should uh, you know, step towards the next uh, for the next row. If I want to go to the next column, this is how much I step to the next column. So it's, it's only going to change those little things. So it's, it's, it's like a, uh, it has, it, it's super fast. It, like, it does nothing to the, uh, to the actual array. It just changes how do you access the next row, how do you access the next row. Okay. But again, it means that the object itself inside is not copied, it's not, uh, it stays uh, exactly the same object. It's just the view of it that has changed. Okay. That's, a, that's an important like, a feature of NumPy. It's a bit of a, like a down the weeds, if you want. Uh, and sometimes, uh, I think it's super useful to have that in memory whenever you get to get some uh, you know, bizarre bugs or like that. Uh, or the, 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 the same thing with the, uh, with the address. I think, uh, I think like the, it's, uh, it's super important that you, uh, you, you have some uh, of the, the, those insights. So yeah, so, so it, it's just going to actually change and, uh, and say, okay, if I want to go uh, from zero to four, then the, uh, in the, uh, instead of having an 8 here, uh, I will have a 32. And instead, if I want to go to the next row, I will have an 8. Okay? And that's, that's how it will change you know, the you know, transpose matrix, will just uh, change the, uh, the layer on the top of the window. Okay, I hope that's not too complicated. Just, I, I think it's, uh, it's nice to see it once. Uh, and just remember it, uh, and, and, and just to go along and, uh, and do you know, what, uh, what you would do, like, which is just, okay, let's just run through the metrics and, and, and think of it. But in case you, uh, you run into uh, bugs or things, like, uh, I think that, that would be useful. Uh, yeah. Okay, so, uh, so non-zero, so function of extracting data from arrays and creating data. Uh, array, so non-zero, that's a useful thing. Uh, just uh, tells you which, uh, uh, which, of the, uh, uh, which of those things are non-zero. Uh, there's a uh, uh, X of indexes, that's, uh, you know, that's, that's the something we saw for the, for the mask. Um, and that's actually fancy indexing, the end of the Diagonal, like let's say you have a four-dimensional or three-dimensional uh, matrix, diagonal will take you to uh, Diagonal of the matrix, uh, the minus one will take you one uh, diagonal below the main diagonal, uh, and so on. Take and never use. Uh, so I'm just going to not do it. Uh, uh, 
because that's how it's tough. I actually never use it. Uh, and it's, it, it may be useful in some situations, but I choose is rarely useful, but it could be uh, sometimes. Uh, so choose is, uh, is basically you're, you're giving uh, a reach and choices, so two arrays of the same size. Uh, and then the, the, the which uh, array is given which is then you, know, you choose from that array or from this one. And then you create an array from uh, this uh, this uh, So that's, uh, that can be useful sometimes. So let's uh, go to the linear algebra and uh, more the... Uh, and that's, because that's, uh, that's where you can see how you can do uh, So let's create an array. Uh, NumPy will work, uh, a bit like MATLAB, it will take uh, your uh, number, multiply, add, all those things. And I'll tell you a bit more how it does that. Um, uh, because it has like a fancy, because, because uh, 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 MATLAB has only like almost like, let's say, two dimensional things, that's not entirely true, right now, but, uh, uh, but uh, because of all those dimensions that the arrays can have, and it can be very useful and sometimes confusing, but, uh, uh, you could actually uh, uh, add arrays that are, you know, like a dimension two and uh, with two dimension varies of uh, three or four dimensions. And when what is done by doing when that happens is something that we'll tell you a bit more uh, soon. So, but to start with, the simple stuff: uh, add a number, it will give you back uh, an array with that number. Uh, multiply the number, same thing, it will give you back an array. With the, uh, each element will be multiplied by the. Uh, uh, element wise multiplication, again, be careful if you're coming from MATLAB, the star here is always element wise. Right? So it's, uh, uh, it's, it's not a, multipli a matrix multiplication, it's not a dot product, it's, uh, it's an element by element. Uh, I think technically it's the LMR product. Yeah. Uh, so that's uh, you know, multiplication of you know, uh, element by element. So uh, we start with that, uh, 0, 2, 4, and that's... Uh, I'm sorry, we start with uh, that. Uh, so we start with uh, that. A is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so that's just uh, the square of that. Uh, then same thing with uh, the vectors. Okay, so uh, so now uh, the shapes we have, we've seen that the shape vector L is five five, the shape the vector is five, and, uh, and that's it. Uh, so A times B uh, is like the multiplication. Of what is going to happen with A times B? I mean, should it work in the first place? So we've got A is five by five, and B is five by five. Work. If you're trying to multiply the 5 by 5 phase with a 5 by nothing, by a vector. So what, what does, it, what does uh, bat map do for numpy shows? Well, it does uh, a clever trick. It kind of believes that you actually want uh, to multiply each color of A by that vector. And uh, so it has a rule, which is called the broadcasting. Um, uh, and what it does is uh, saying, OK, uh, so uh, for instance, if I have a two, uh, so the rule is uh, if the last, latest dimension is, uh, uh, is the same. So you, you start with the, la the, the latest dimension. So uh, for instance, you start with uh, uh, two to the array. One is three by four and one is three by one. What it's going to do is actually uh, uh, not uh, like replicate that thing such that the output array of the uh, of this one is going to be three by four. So it's going to take the three and then say, okay, I need a three by four. I will have a three by one. I'm going to do three by one, three by one, three by one, four times. That's going to be my array. And then I can do the multiplication from my point, element by element. Is that clear? That that's, is the, the, the key thing of broadcasting. So you can, okay, so let's take another example. Let's take a three dimensional array with dimension, uh, the, uh, so three dimensions, a 
and we uh, dimension one as three elements, dimension two to five, and dimension three one element. And then let's multiply with an array that has only uh, one dimension, and uh, what is this dimension is. Because the latest, the, lat, the latest dimension is one, Numbai will say, okay, there's a one at the latest uh, dimension. I can, I assume that, you know, you want to multiply by something that has eight elements. I'm going to say that I'm going to replicate everything before eight times. Okay. And that's, and I'm going to have the shape three, five, eight at the end. So here I've, I've replicated everything four times. So everything, all those three elements were replicated four times. And I have now a three by four thing. Uh, here I've got a, a three, five, one, eight. And then I replicate everything eight times here. And everything here, I replicate three or five times. So I've got now the same, the same shape. I can multiply happily and uh, get it. Okay, that, yeah, we have to think a bit of it. <laughs> you know, it's not, uh, it's not as, uh, uh, but it's a super, super useful mechanism. And the, and the rule is not too complicated. So that wouldn't work for instance. Uh, that, uh, three, five, two, and then an element of eight, uh, and an, an array of eight, uh, one dimension. Uh, I don't know what to do with it, say it's number. Because I, I can't, I, you know, I'm not matching. Uh, so, um, is that kind of clear? Or I think we have to play with it a bit, right? Um, because this, uh, so, so what is in this instance? Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's take this, uh, this example. So, a dot shape is five by five. Okay. Uh, B one dot shape. What does the rule say? If there's nothing, it will replace the nothing by the, the number. So that's going to be a 5 by 5 after processing. So uh, V1 was this array of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then uh, let's say I first. Uh, so what is I? Well, you probably guess that it's just a this matrix. Okay. So now I can do so I dot shape is five by five. Okay. B1 is still, uh, B1 is still, uh, I find nothing. Okay. So I star B1 is going to be uh, the right, I mean, thing that you sh should be, uh, it just has replicated uh, that uh, the uh, V1 uh, such that you know, yeah, we now have uh, it just has replicated the V1. So uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, just try, try to multiply some arrays that don't have the same shape uh, and, and check that that rule is always working. Okay. If it's, uh, uh, if it's, uh, uh, that, that rule will always be working. Check, start from the latest dimension, see if the latest dimension uh, don't match, uh, that's not going to work, unless there's a one. In that case, you replicate everything that is before. So you just match the latest dimension, and you go back to the next dimension. Is there a one or not? And you know something like that. Then you will get and so on and so on. All right, that's tough, but powerful. <laughs> uh, so.
to please, uh, please help me. Uh, in a way of looking at it uh, is, uh, let's say I want to multiply uh, uh, this uh, 3 by 4 with this uh, 8 uh, vector. Okay, so I've got those two arrays. Uh, I'm going to replicate that 3 by 4 array eight times. So those will be like the invalid blocks. Okay? I'm also going to replicate that eight by nothing array three by four times. I will have this block of violet again, and I can multiply all those numbers uh, in the violet. Okay? And that's the three by four uh, by one times uh, the eight uh, by nothing multiplication. Okay? Sorry, I can see that you know, this is uh, <laughs> hard to get, but, uh, but, but it's just so let's, uh, let's play with it and, and then uh, and maybe if you have more questions or if you have questions. Uh, so that's, the, uh, that's what uh, this, uh, this is uh, showing you, uh, uh, that this, this notification is this uh, adding dimensions, so let's say you have, uh, uh, this by default, this is kind of adding, you do numpy is actually uh, behind the scene adding dimension to your, to your array, so that they have the same shape. Uh, and there are two ways of adding dimension. You can, uh, so let's say you have like uh, this array of 3 by 5, and you can actually add the dimension by just putting uh, the keyword in there. So, like, like, so the latest dimension, you have now a 3 by 5 by 1. And uh, there's also a better way to do it, which is an numpy that you axis. So we just create an axis. And again, if you remember how an array is actually represented in memory, it just doesn't do much. It just puts a little bit more of the, on the layer that is the view of the array. Something that tells you, oh, now we have another dimension. But it doesn't do much. OK. Uh, matrix algebra is a uh, uh, NB dot is your friend. Uh, there's uh, no a new way of saying it here, but NB dot is the uh, uh, is the matrix multiplication. Uh, so let's say let's uh, multiply a by a. That's that's going to be the result. Um, that's that's a proper matrix multiplication. That's uh, that is not right. And you can always do NB dot. So NB dot uh, a and b one. And same broadcast in both broadcast in both will happen. So, uh, well, in this instance, uh, you can understand that uh, in the latest dimension, the, uh, the dimension match. Uh, the, uh, uh, you could do NP uh, with a vector, of course, it's a dot product. So, dot product is more than metric multiplication. It's like a. Uh, uh, so, you just do the sum of the uh, product of the other type. That's a dot product. Uh, and you cannot proceed that with that. Or you can use the at operator, which has been introduced uh, with pattern 3 something, 6 something, I don't know. And that's uh, an array uh, that will be giving you exactly the same thing as You can also, also use dots uh, as uh, if you do uh, a uh, dot, I think, in one, dot is also uh, a method of the array. So you can say, I've got a multiplication, matrix multiplication method, dot product method, and you know, this, my array times, you know, like a, that method, with that method, uh, times the number array. Uh, so there's, sometimes we see that. Uh, so some examples uh, here, you uh, can uh, subtract or multiply objects. Uh, if you don't have the right shape, again, my, uh, so if you try to uh, do n times v, where n is 5 by 5 and v is 6 by 1, uh, that's going to uh, number you to say, hey, I want to do that product of those, so you don't have this number. All right. Um, there's a lot in my own part, a lot. Uh, there is uh, outer multiplication, inner product, inner product that, uh, and one of the, uh, one of the most uh, fun things is the connector product. Uh, that's like a uh, replicate uh, matrices where uh, other matrices are non and, uh, and that's, that's, that is very powerful. You can write extremely concise 
and sometimes they obs obs you know, obscure those using those things. So uh, very powerful and 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 you know, and careful. So uh, I will think I will skip that, but just to tell you there's a number of mathematical things in uh, in just go. One way of doing it uh, is just like you're looking at uh, if, uh, if you do uh, one pi dot and then that, uh, it's going to do a long list of uh, you see you see that long list of things here? That's that's how much uh, non pi has. Uh, and that's going to be in my case. Really a lot of functions. Uh, so, good chances uh, if you want to do something, NumPy has it somewhere. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, don't, uh, don't record anything before you actually have looked carefully at the. Uh, uh, Alright. Uh, angles of uh, complex things, matrix multiplication. So, inverse of uh, NumPy has a where you have the ACT, inverse, uh, the, uh, you have a bunch of uh, matri classic matrix operation. So uh, this is the inverse. Uh, uh, you, you can see that inverse of uh, C times the C is almost at, at the numerical precision uh, of, uh, of, uh, of your machine. Uh, then it's uh, you know, minus 16 here uh, is almost uh, so you're checking that. Be careful with the you know, numerical precision, it can trick you. It can, I mean, it can trick you. It's, uh, it's not a uh, uh, linear determinant. Uh, determinant uh, uh, I think there's a number of simple operations that you really should be aware of. Uh, uh, so you can do, uh, let's say, I've got my, uh, my array data. And that I've taken like we've got the 17,000 clients in that. I want the mean of those uh, in the, uh, for the three first rows, for instance, uh, and the third column. Uh, this is how you would do it. You do n by that mean. You could also do uh, data of everything, uh, and then the third row, uh, the third column, I'm sorry, uh, and then mean, and that's a function. So take uh, as a function, just put some parameters, uh, and that will give you the same number. So the array itself has a bunch of methods uh, that are uh, function on that array, that are uh, operating on that array. And uh, that's another way of saying, okay, you can actually say, hey, non by give me the mean of that object. That's, uh, you know, or you can say more in, in an object programming way, uh, hey, object, uh, take, take yourself the mean of yourself, and take the mean of yourself. The two ways of writing it, but they are pretty much equivalent and uh, advice in which one should be. Standard deviation variance of those things, uh, same thing. Like, uh, again and again, those things uh, can also write, uh, um, um, write data. Max, those things are useful. I think I can max the sum, the produce, the trace. Again, the cumulative sum. I think for the non parameterized cumulative sum, so if I do the sum, the sum, I've got an array with all the cumulative sum. The product is very often, like a, so let's say I want to uh, uh, look at uh, how, many, how many elements do I have in my array, I do uh, D, but uh, so let's make this fit. Yeah, 
or do some in a kung product as well. Uh, presentation of subset of array. So again, uh, if you want to a subset of the array, you can, you can do so, uh, and then you know, like that. so uh, I put that. Uh, I found a little bug actually in my own pipe. I put that because uh, sometimes you actually want to. Uh, limit the number of lines you see when you're working with big arrays and you want uh, all the thousand of lines or, so there's a number there's a number that NumPy will look at and look at the setting of a there's a number of a default setting uh, you could show change the default how much uh, uh, how much do you want after the, the, uh, the comma uh, after the, uh, the, uh, the precision after the, uh, the main number how much uh, how do you want to display some of those things do you want to Surprise uh, the other things you want to uh, and so on and so on. So the threshold one thousand, I think, the number of, uh, uh, of lines that you're going to display. Uh, if I put that threshold to ten, I believe I will have only ten uh, lines being displayed. Okay, so that's useful. I mean, those, those little tricks are, are fairly useful because you know they, they help you uh, manage. Uh, see so if I had uh, if I had actually. Uh, Precision equal uh, zero. I think I will have just uh, just the first number, like no no uh, no precision. Hello, so little things like that in my head. Uh, let's go back to at least one hundred uh, precision four.
you know, like those navies, it's actually overwhelming two of the most five. It's fun to work with. <laughs> Don't <laughs> you know, like a, it's a, the broadcasting thing, the like a, the, the you know, like a changing the shape of those things. You just have to uh, reread those notes carefully. Look at to what's been uh, like uh, uh, go over too quickly. Uh, uh, remember the principle. I mean, I think with the principle you can work it out. Okay. The principle is uh, the shape of an array is just a layer on top of memory that tells you how to access you know, the values in the array uh, axis by axis. So you know, okay, if I want to go to the second axis, then you, know, you just have to jump you know, a number of, uh, of, uh, of elements. And, uh, and then if you want to reshape that, you change the number of times you jump. <laughs> you know, and that, that's, that's basically the principle. So, so if you have that principle in mind, you, you, you should be, uh, you should be good.